Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our church service this morning. I hope you are all well. It is very strange being here without you, but I hope you guys are well considering the current restrictions. And I also hope that you are sat at home with a coffee in your hand, on your sofa, with your Bible next to you, ready to hear what the Lord wants to share with us today. So we are going to start this morning by reading God's word and we are going to read together Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me. O God of my salvation, even if my father and mother abandon me, Lord, you will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I have never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful psalm to open this morning with. And let's now just pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Well, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness to us, Lord. Father, we just want to commit this morning to you and ask, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way among us. We honour your name, Jesus. We glorify your name. We worship your name and we praise your name, Jesus. We love your name, Jesus. The name above every name, our Lord, our Saviour and our King. And Father, I just want to pray your blessing over everybody watching today. That Holy Spirit, you will come and fill us afresh. That you would soften our hearts, Lord, to hear what you want to say to us today. Give us a fresh revelation, Lord, of who you are. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And if this is your first time watching us today, then... A special welcome to you. It's really great to have you with us. My name's Anna and I am one of the pastors here at the river. I really hope you enjoy your time with us this morning. I know a lot of us are doing every day with Jesus at the moment together and Mark and I received this new one through the post this week and it's basically just a month long and it's written by a guy called Misha Jazz. And it's specifically written to encourage us how we should be living in these times of lockdown and COVID. And it's only a month long devotion. If anybody wants to borrow it, then please get in touch with me and you can borrow it because it's, it's been really, really fantastic. And it says in the introduction, a global pandemic has woken us to the fact that our world is indeed changing. We are challenged once again to consider how we are to live every day with Jesus and share the good news with everyone in these uncertain times. Jesus remains the same yesterday, today and forever. And as Dr. Billy Graham says, every Christian must remain anchored to the rock 
yet geared to the times in which they live. And I just want to share one day with you because it fits what I'm going to be talking about later. And this is um, the guy writing this. When facing trouble, I seek to distance myself from my imagined fears. Such fears play on my mind, preventing a good night's sleep. My behaviour bends to silence my fears at any cost. Such fears are more imagined than real. Their imagined consequences tempt me to act swiftly, but such action is often irreversible and shapes my future life. I start to build my future with my own hands, without God's guidance and help. Living every day with Jesus means discovering my security, present and future, is at God's discretion. I'm invited to look beyond my immediate sense of threat and find God. Yet an anxious mind ambushes me in this search and my flight response is triggered. I have no time to pause and ponder. When fear confronts me and my enemy attacks me, I fight a battle I can't win. Who can find peace of mind when besieged by fears? In learning to take God at his word, which is scripture, I'm reminded that I'm only to fear any reaction that removes me from God's provision and protection. Whilst I don't experience this in the storm whipped up by my fears, it remains God's promise. Here, the character of my faith is tested to the extreme. Who will see me through this storm? My own ingenuity or God? We assume rescue is removal from impending peril, yet God's rescue involves walking through the storm. God, my shepherd, accompanies me even as I stumble and circumstances overwhelm me. I surrender to God and my fears are repositioned. No longer do I sweat over their imagined consequences. I choose to accept God's goodness. My heartbeat slows. My mind clears and I contemplate the mystery of God from within the storm. I fix my gaze on Jesus rather than my assumed fate. And that's just it, isn't it, in these uncertain times. It's choosing to accept God's goodness. It's choosing to believe in his word, to trust him in the storm and through the storm and to fix our gaze on him. And that reminds me of something that Pastor Mark shared a few weeks ago, that we are to merely glance at this world, but to gaze at Jesus. And that's where our peace comes from, isn't it? Spending time in Jesus's presence, spending time in his word and trusting in him and not our circumstances. <clears throat> now that leads us nicely on to the new initiative that we've started the last couple of weeks and that is whispering Jesus, whispering Jesus over our circumstances, over our lives, over our families. And a lot of that, a lot of us have been doing that for quite some time now. But what we want to start doing is doing it corporately, together, as a church, at the same time. So every Sunday morning now, for a few minutes, we're going to come together. It doesn't matter that you're not here with me. The Holy Spirit can work wherever we are. So sat at home now, we're just going to spend a few moments whispering that precious name of Jesus because it is the name above every name. It is the name that breaks chains and it's the name that silences the enemy and it is the most powerful name that we can whisper. So let's just spend a few minutes now just whispering the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. <clears throat> we whisper Jesus over our hearts and minds. We whisper Jesus over our families, our neighbours and our friends. We whisper Jesus over this community. 
We whisper Jesus over this nation. We whisper Jesus over our circumstances. Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Amen. That is such a powerful, wonderful thing to be able to do. <clears throat> I'm now just going to share some notices with you. Uh, we had a wonderful time of prayer on Friday. It was a national prayer day that was organised by the Evangelical Alliance. And we opened church just for a couple of hours for private prayer. And some of you came to that. That was really great. And then we had a, a prayer meeting by Zoom Friday night. It's the first time we've done that. Again, a fantastic time. And we're going to start doing that more regularly. So this week coming up on Friday, on, sorry, on Wednesday, we're going to open up again for private prayer Wednesday morning. And that's between 11 and 1. So just come here in the sanctuary, privately spend some time with the Lord. It's not a communal thing. We can't corporately come and pray, but you can come and just be on your own and privately pray here in the sanctuary. We'll be open 11 till 1 Wednesday. And then Wednesday evening, we've got Cole preaching and that's by audio. You can get that link on the website. And then Friday, we're going to have private prayer again, Friday morning, 11 till 1. And then Friday evening is our Israel prayer night. That's with Dave Goodall. Again, that's an audio that will be on the website. And we've decided to, to have another prayer meeting by Zoom. And we're going to do it Thursday evening this week because Friday is Israel. So Thursday evening, half past seven. You don't even need to leave your house, which is wonderful. Um, a great time of prayer together. We will set that up, Mark and I, and we'll send the link on to all of you. Um, if any of you watching don't receive emails or WhatsApp from us, keeping you all up to date with things, then please get in touch with someone from church who can pass your details on to us and we'll add you on to that list. Uh, Mark or I speak regularly to you guys, letting you know and updating you on things. So it's a really good way to stay in touch with the family church and to know what's going on. Uh, so that's this week. Like I say, we'll send you the link for Zoom Thursday evening. It's very simple to set up. Again, if you have problems doing that, please get in touch with myself or Kieran or Mark and we can run through how to join that Zoom uh, prayer meeting. So that'd be great. We also have two birthdays with this week. I'd just like to mention them. We've got Brian Coombs. I think Brian's 91 this week, which is <clears throat> wonderful, a wonderful age to get to. And we've also got Anne Jay. It's her birthday this week as well. So we just want to say, have a wonderful birthday, you guys. And just want you to know how precious you are to us as a church family. And we just pray abundant blessings for you this year ahead. So that's our notices. And we are now going to come on to our preach. And thinking about this, I've entitled this preach, Turn Up the Voice of Victory. <clears throat> now you might be asking, sorry, I'm just getting ready as I'm talking to you. There we go. Now you might be asking, what does that mean exactly? Turn up the voice of victory. Well, for me, the voice of victory is Jesus. And it's his voice that needs to be turned up in our lives. It's his voice that we need to tune into and listen to. It's his voice that needs to be clearest in our minds. His voice that we need to hear above everything else, above the noise of this world. Which is funny, really, because we've just been whispering the name of Jesus. And now here I am telling you to turn up the voice of Jesus. So it's a paradox, really. But we can turn up the voice of Jesus by whispering his name simply whispering his name. It's also God's word. His word is the voice of victory. God's word is ultimate truth and it's what we build our lives on. It's how we navigate through life. And we need to remember that God's word is eternal. All of this around us is temporary, isn't it? But his word is everlasting and it is the most powerful weapon that we 
can use. And so what I want to do today is look at how we turn up the voice of victory in our lives, how we can live a victorious life, even when the world around us seems to be in utter chaos and is in utter chaos. <laughs> because the truth is we are absolutely bombarded with information, aren't we? Everywhere we turn, there is one voice or another telling us how we should live our lives, what we should or shouldn't be doing, telling us what's right or wrong, telling us what we should believe, what we should believe about ourselves, what we should believe about our community. And these voices can bring fear, chaos, anxiety to our minds. And before we know it, we can find ourselves listening to those voices instead of the truth of God's word. <clears throat> and whilst we, what we hear won't determine our destiny, what we listen to will. And so what I want to do today is help us to be empowered to turn down the voices of defeat and turn up the voices of victory so that we can live the life that Jesus intended us to live, even in these uncertain and unsettled times. Sound good? Oh, you're not here to answer that, actually. <laughs> I'm going to carry on. So the first thing that I want us to realize, to fully understand and to fully believe is that we don't have to fight for our victory, but rather we fight from a place of victory. We have already won. We are already victorious. Why? Because Jesus is victorious. Jesus has overcome death and defeated the enemy. He has conquered sin and death on the cross. And if you are a son, or daughter of the king, then Jesus lives in you and Jesus lives in me and his victory lives in you. We carry that victory within us. <clears throat> the cross and the resurrection are the greatest victory to have ever taken place in the history of the world. And Jesus died and rose again so that we could live in that victory taking it on as our own identity and we can rest in him and we can remind the enemy that he has already been defeated. The victory belongs to Jesus and his victory is ours. It says in Colossians 2 verses 13 to 15, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Amen. But one of the things that the enemy will try and do is make us doubt this victory, make us doubt God's goodness for our lives, and make us doubt God's word for our lives. You know, when Jesus was tested in the wilderness, a significant part of the enemy's challenge was to tempt Jesus to doubt God's word and to question his own identity. And he tries to do the same with us. And this is why we must align our thinking with biblical truth and speak it out and turn up that voice of victory. Like I said before, this book, this Bible, is the most powerful weapon we have. And when we align our thinking with scripture, then we gain a godly perspective. And everything changes when we shift from our own perspective to a godly perspective, to God's perspective. Things change. And we can turn up the voice of victory by declaring to the defeated one who we are in Christ. And I just want to remind you today who you are in Christ and who I am in Christ. We are a new creation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. We're no longer servants, but we are friends of God. We don't have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love and sound judgment. And we are seated with him in the heavenly places. Christ lives in us and greater is he that it is in us 
than he that is in the world. And if you are perhaps finding things tough at the minute, if you're struggling with life and fear and worry, then declare these scriptures over yourself. Speak them over yourself because this is truth. This is where you will find your strength. So when all around us is shaky and uncertain, then we can stand firm on this truth together that we are in Christ. Therefore, we live a victorious life that he has called us to. And that's irrelevant of our circumstances and irrelevant of our situation. You know, our peace cannot be tied to an outcome. So we can't say, oh, well, I'll find my peace once lockdown's over and I can start getting back to normal. Or I'll find my peace once the vaccine's here and I've had it. No, our peace comes from trusting fully in God, trusting fully in his word, putting all our faith and our hope in him. So I have a question for you today. What voices are you listening to? What voices do you allow to speak into your life? Do the voices that you listen to bring you clarity or fear and worry, confusion, anxiety? Like I said earlier, we live in a world now where we are literally bombarded every day with information. Often the first thing people reach for in the morning is their phones. So they pick it up. Oh, I'll just have a quick check of my messages. Let me have a look at the news updates while I'm here. Might as well quickly have a scroll through Facebook and have a look on my emails. And all of that can be done before someone even gets out of bed in the mornings. Our world is full, isn't it, of iPads, iPhones, computers, hundreds of channels on our TVs, social media, thousands and thousands of apps that we can download apps on our phone so that we can access what we want when we want, literally at the touch of a button. And it's scary, really, if you think about it, how easy it is to access information nowadays. <clears throat> and sometimes it can be hard to discern what's worth knowing and what isn't worth knowing. And we need to get good at discerning what voice to turn up and what voice to turn off. There is literally so much information out there, isn't it, that it can become all-consuming and it's so easy. It could be so easy to get completely bogged down with that. I wonder how many times have you gone onto a website and you've read something and then the next day you've gone onto a different website perhaps and read something completely different that totally contradicts what you've just read. And what does that do? That brings confusion, doesn't it? That's the voice of confusion speaking into your life. I'm sure lots of you watching will remember a time when there was no such thing as the internet. Um, and unfortunately, the internet has made access for information so readily available at the touch of a button. Are you aware that you can now put your illness into Google and it will tell you what's wrong with you. Has any of you ever done that? I know I've done that. And the trouble is when you do that, it will then come up with 50 different outcomes that it could be. And then you worry even more because you look at what the worst outcome could be and you assume that that's what you've got. It's crazy. That's complete information overload right there. The voice of fear speaking into your life. But also, and what about those voices that have spoken over your life? <clears throat> Maybe it's just been one word or one sentence that has absolutely framed your entire life. Maybe a teacher at school has said to you, you're not going to amount to anything. Maybe a, when you were a child, a parent has said to you, you're useless. Or what about the school friend who innocently called you a silly name? But that name has now completely taken root in your heart and has now totally shaped your whole thinking. And what I want you to try and discern today is what is worth knowing, like I said, and what isn't worth knowing. Because if we listen to the wrong people, 
or we listen to the wrong voices in our lives, we could actually miss out on our God-given destiny. The messages we listen to actually help frame our thinking, don't they? And if we think, and the way we think helps frame the way we act. So if you don't think right, you're not going to act right. And if you listen to the wrong people, then you're going to think wrong thoughts and you're going to act in the wrong way. It is so important to listen to the right voices. And what I want us to do today is look at a scripture. I've actually used it before in a preach. It is one of my favorite stories in the entire Bible. It's David and Goliath. And it just frames exactly what we're talking about today. So it's 1 Samuel 17. If you want to turn to it with me, that would be great because we're going to go through quite a lot of it together. <coughs> So 1 Samuel 17, and we're going to start right at the beginning. And like I say, it highlights completely what we're talking about today. <clears throat> so I'm going to start at verse 1. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Succah in Judah and Azekar at Ephraim's Denim. Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the valley of Elah. So the Philistines and Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with the valley between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine foot tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coat of mail weighed 125 pounds. Now that is nine stone. His bronze coat of mail weighed nine stone. He also wore bronze leg armour and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armour bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stirred and shouted a taunt across the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight, he called. I am the Philistine champion. You are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. So I want us to get this today. It's not when they saw the nine foot giant that they were scared, but it was when they heard him, when they heard his taunts, when they heard his threats, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Now, David was the son of a man named Jesse, an Ephratite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab and Shemaiah, had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days, every morning and every evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the army, the Israelite army. Now, can you imagine that? 40 days, every morning and every night, this nine foot giant struts in front of them and speaks over the Israelite army. Who do you think you are? I dare one of you to come and fight me. I'm the Philistine champion. Can you imagine how much that would goad them and taunt them? And he does that every day for 40 days and 40 evenings. Wow. Let's go on. One day, Jesse said to David, take this basket of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring a report back on how they are doing. So remember that David is the youngest son. He's the youngest brother of eight, isn't he? And he's at home with his dad looking after all the sheep, faithfully serving his father. And then Jesse, his father, tells him to make lunch and take it to all his brothers. 
David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelite and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking to them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. So what we need to understand here is that Goliath was speaking those same taunts that he'd been speaking for the last 40 days. Day in, day out, over and over and over. And he'd been taunting the Israelite army, hadn't he? And we know from before that when the Israelites heard, they were terrified and deeply shaken. So these words, this voice had terrorized and crippled an entire army. And then here we have a little boy who comes to bring his lunch for his brothers and he leaves that with the keeper and he goes out to greet the brothers. And he is expecting to be in the middle of a war, isn't he? And we've just read that Goliath comes out again and he begins to speak fear over the army. He begins to speak oppression over the Israelites. And David hears exactly the same words that his brothers hear. He hears exactly the same taunting. He hears exactly the same ridicule. But what we see here in scripture is that you can hear exactly what everyone else is hearing, but what you hear isn't going to determine your destiny, but what you listen to will. Now the entire army listened to the words of Goliath and they were paralyzed and crippled with fear. David, however, didn't listen to them. He heard the same words, but he listened to what God had said. And we'll get onto that but in a minute. And because he chose to listen to the right voice, he was able to act in the right way. Now, we are living in a world, aren't we, full of negativity, a world full of chaos, a world full of fear and confusion. And the news is full, isn't it, of COVID, fear, famine, injustice. I mean, I could go on and on, couldn't I? And we can hear the same news as everybody else. We can be bombarded with the same information as everybody else. What you hear, you can't control, but what you listen to, you can. And remember, what you listen to can determine your destiny. And if you and I are going to navigate this world in the right way, the chaos of this world, then we need to make the decision to listen to the right voice. We need to filter what we listen to. We need to selectively choose what we listen to. Let's go on. So verse 24 says, as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. So they'd gone from seeing him earlier on, not afraid, but then they listened to that voice over and over for 40 days and 40 nights, morning and night. And the listening had so impacted them that when they then saw him, they ran away. You see, what happens if you listen to something for long enough, you allow it to shape you. And I wonder if anybody watching has listened to a wrong voice in their life over and over. And then when it finally confronts you, it creates that flea response in you and you run away in fear. We heard that earlier, didn't we, in the Everyday with Jesus that I read, that flea response, running away in the wrong direction. It's so important that we listen to the right voices. I can't stress that enough, guys. Okay, so let's go on. So as soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? 
And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, that's the reward for killing him. And so now we get to the good bit. Whilst everyone else is running away, whilst everyone else is freaking out that they've seen this Philistine and they're now really scared of him, David says, who is he? Who is he to defy the armies of the living God? And he instantly turns the situation around to how it should be. You know, he's saying we're here because God has sent us to have victory. Why are you all freaking out? God has promised us that victory. We are the armies of the living God. We don't need to run from the battle. We run to the battle because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And it's the same for us today, guys. I wonder, what is it you're confronting? What is it that you are fearful of? What battle are you running away from instead of running towards it saying, I am victorious? You know, we can't believe the lie of the enemy. We can't live under that voice of fear and confusion. We don't need to run from these things. Instead, we stand victorious. We declare the same thing, that greater is he that is in me, in you, than he that is in the world. We know that all of God's promises are yes and amen. So we don't need to run from these things. We don't need to be fearful because the battle and the victory is already ours. It says, let's go on, verse 28 but when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the man, he was angry. Now, we know what this is, don't we? This is older brother syndrome. The youngest brother brings his lunch. And to be fair, Eliab could well be David's hero, couldn't he? And he's probably a bit embarrassed because David has seen him frightened. He's seen him cowering and running away from the enemy. So he says, what are you doing around here anyway? What about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. You know, a negative voice will always come and try and question your motives when you're trying to do good. There'll always be someone who will try and bring you down. Eliab says, doesn't he, that he knows David is full of pride and deceit. And in the NIV version, it says... I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. Well, we know that's not true, don't we? Because the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. And we too will get naysayers come and question our motives, that will come and question our hearts. But I'd say to you today not to add too much weight to what these people say. And maybe some of you listening today may feel really challenged by this. And you might need to change your friendship circles. Maybe some of you need to delete some friends on Facebook. You know, I've just done this recently and it felt really good. I think I deleted about 50 people. Um, I just didn't want or need their negative, rude, gossipy comments coming up on my feed all the time. I didn't need to be reading stuff like that. And having those voices speak into my life, why would I want that? So I deleted them and it felt good. We need to guard more than anything who we listen to. So let's listen to David's response to Eliab. And it is a typical little brother's response. What have I done now? David replied. I was only asking a question. He walked over to some others and asked them the same thing and received the same answer. Then David's question was reported to King Saul. And the king sent for him. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go and fight him. So this is the little brother, the youngest of eight, telling the king that he was going to go and fight the giant. He fully trusted in his God. He knew that the victory was his. He listened to the promises of God and not the voice of the enemy. Always remember the enemy cannot silence the voice of victory. And this is exactly what we need to be doing. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. That is how we turn up the voice of victory in our lives, keeping our eyes fixed on him and fully trusting in God. And we need to feed ourselves with the right voices, 
We need to, to be around people who encourage us. We need to be around people who will speak to our purpose and people who we trust to speak into our lives. You have the responsibility of what you watch and what you listen to. And you need to take that responsibility seriously. Maybe a lot of anxiety we feel is because we're watching things we shouldn't be watching and listening to things we shouldn't be listening to. So can I suggest that you choose wisely what you listen to? Because what you listen to will shape how you think, how you act, how you behave. We need more than anything in these times to listen to the truth of God's word and not the lies of the enemy. And so finally, when the voice of defeat attempts to rear its ugly head, or when the voice of fear consumes your mind, or confusion surrounds you, remember, turn up the voice of victory, declare and speak out God's word over your life. Remember your position in Christ, look at things from God's perspective, Trust fully in the absolute goodness of God for your life and whisper Jesus over every situation because he is the voice of victory. Now, in the natural, I can understand why you might feel scared or frightened standing in front of a nine foot giant that has taunted you for 40 days and 40 nights. And some of you are in this position right now in your lives. You're scared, you're afraid, you've got a huge giant in front of you and you feel like you've lost the battle and you just want to run the other way. But we don't look at things from the natural. We live a life in the supernatural. And this is how your situation actually looks. If we could have that on the screen, Kieran, that'd be great. This is how your situation looks now. God stands above you. He fights for you. He is your defender. He is your victory. He is always with you. He is your protector in every situation. He always surrounds you and is always with you. And if you look in this picture now at David, so this is David and Goliath, isn't it? Look how tall David stands. His shoulders are back. His chest is out. He is full of confidence. Now, is that pride? Absolutely not. That is confidence in his God. Confident that his Lord will do what he says and confident that the battle is his. And we need to have that same confidence and that same same trust because God is always with us and God is our victory. Now, we often finish our services with a song, don't we? And I've got so many wonderful songs about victory, but that doesn't work for um, live streaming. So I'm actually going to do something even better. And I am going to read a scripture over us to finish. And I am going to declare this psalm over us today. And it's actually written by David. I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I shall never be shaken. So many enemies against one man, all of them trying to kill me. To them I am just a broken down wall or a tottering fence. They plan to topple me from my high position. They delight in telling lies about me. They praise me to my face, but curse me in their hearts. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honour come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. O my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Amen. I hope that's blessed you and encouraged you today. Uh, We look forward to seeing you next week. It will be Pastor Mark bringing the service to you next week. So I really hope you have a great week and I hope you have a great week turning up the voice of victory in your life. 
Bye for now.